we're going to look at uh, mouth movement, lip syncing. Uh, pretty much everyone that uh, did this first assignment uh, with the uh, model sheet has some kind of character that can have some kind of speech. And most of you drew it with a mouth. A couple of you uh, created maybe like a robot character that doesn't have a defined mouth, but it'll still probably speak. And this is coming to the part of the project that's going to be given at the end of the month for topic two, where you're going to make your character talk a little bit. So we need to practice that first. Here's what we'll do first. Go ahead and open up your web browser. We're going to do a search. Uh, you're going to search for the keyword. Just uh, go to your browser for a moment and search the keywords. Um, animation mouth movements. You're going to see them as different examples. Mouth chart or mouth or lip charts and such. I'm just showing you this because I'm, I'm, I've got a, a mouth chart for you, but you're going to find, uh, you're going to find, you know, 697,000 more of them online. And the point of this is just to see the examples from different people, different companies, and this is what will help you make your character talk. Now again, if your character has a well-defined mouth like this, this will make most sense. But if your character has a, has a simple mouth, let's say it's a robot and its mouth is just a slit, well, you'll have to kind of figure out how that slit is going to make the different sounds. So on your own, you can, you can check out all of these examples, but I've got one for you. And of course, people will have more tutorials on YouTube and such. It looks like there's a tutorial there on YouTube how to do lip syncing. The idea is we're going to have a sound, and we need to synchronize the shape of the mouth with what's happening in the soundtrack. So I've got a bunch of results in the images, which you can look at at some point. There's like also some birds and other creatures. There's some really realistic ones. Just a bunch of examples. So you can browse those at a certain point. I've got one for you. Let's go to the web design folder. Inside CIS 126. Inside of Topic 2 Handouts, you're going to need a copy of a few things. Um, Lip Sync 1.1 and 2. Just copy them to your desktop. And I've got a sound file. Number 1, Let's Creep, Let's Creep Bob. So copy that. Take the sound file, Let's Creep Bob, and then take the two Lip Sync files to your desktop or a folder or somewhere. All right, Sarah and Dante, we have started the lecture, so let's please not fall behind. So once we've got those three files, let's open up Animate. And let's create a brand new Action Script 3 file. The reason for that is because we want to be able to synchronize the sound with the visuals and we don't get all of the synchronization features in the HTML5 canvas version. I mentioned that before but I'll mention it again because when you make your own animation I don't want you to go to the wrong one. You want to go into animate and select action script 3.0. I'm gonna save that. Well, let's first set our size of our project. We've been working with HD quality size so that it's, when it prints, it looks nice, and when it's viewed on the screen, it looks nice. So what's our size again for our project? Oh, 1920 by 1080. Perfect, so 1920 wide by 1080 tall. And we'll save that. I'm just gonna save it with today's date and lip sync. So file save as. I'm going to save mine to the desktop. Actually, I'm going to save it to my flash drive. 
and uh, put today's date. So today's uh, the 20th. This will be lip sync. We're just saving our file with today's date, lip sync. The idea is uh, if we look at lip sync one and lip sync two file. I'm going to just open it to view it. I don't need to put it into my animate project. You could if you want to uh, trace it. But for us, for the moment, let's just look at it. Let's double click, uh, you know, view, view the actual file, lip sync 1.1. If you'd like, you'll be able to print it later, but not, not during the lecture because the printer's noisy. And so this is one of those examples from the various websites. So if I'm going to make a character say something like, hello, well, I kind of try to match up one of these letters and draw that kind of mouth for my character. So this kind of mouth is kind of cartoony, and maybe your character's mouth is not that cartoony, but you can still extrapolate. So I'm, I'm going to write hello. I don't see an H because, you know, the actual sound of the H is kind of silent depending on another vowel. So if I'm going to say hello, notice there's the E right there, hello. If I really want to emphasize the H in my character saying hello, I could, uh, I could uh, make a mouth movement for that. But basically, when, when I see that the sound is hello in the timeline of Animate, I'm going to draw a mouth that looks something like that for the duration of hello. Then I'm going to say low, hello. So there's an L right here. Notice how the tongue is touching the top of the mouth, and then an O sound. So, hello would be these three, approximately. And these don't always have to, you don't have to follow every single mouth movement like this all the time, but these are general ideas. This is 1.1, and the other one that I also gave you is a 2. This is how it might also look you know, in profile with the character fully defined. Let me open up both of them at once, just to show you what that looks like. So here's the, they don't line up exactly, that'd be nice, but there's the O, or for an O or a U. Um, there's the L, I guess they do line up. There's the L. Hello. Notice straight on, you might see it like that. Sideways, a little bit of the tongue touching the top of the mouth. And I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to fly away. So the F sound over there. So when you check out, when you do a search and you find all of these examples, which one do you use? Well, they're all right. They're all wrong in that whatever you are trying to do, it may work or not. Like here's one that looks really cartoony. It kind of looks like maybe a character That's from Rugrats. That's probably Wild Thorns. Okay, I was gonna say uh, Rugrats, but yeah, Wild Thornberries. So, yeah. so the face. If your character is very cartoony, this might be a good one to borrow. If your face is a little more realistic, here's another one. I'm gonna find plenty of examples online famous examples oh someone's making the, the the Mona Lisa speak over here that's funny there's a horse well, it's what's that what's that? oh yeah 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 they were very famous for for that so you'll probably find examples of famous ones like Donald Duck lip sync etc you can oh there's corn fed from uh, Duckman so there's lots of examples that you find online. Again, they're all right, they're all wrong. Which would you choose? Maybe finding one that's similar to the kind of character that you're doing. If you've got a realistic kind of character, you could search for realistic animation mouth movements. If you're doing a very cartoony one, you can search for that. If you want to look for a famous one, you know, you could look up uh, Samurai Jack mouth movement chart. 
and probably find that example too. So plenty of examples out there. Here's one from like maybe the, the modern like Pixar movies or the 3D animated movies. There's examples. There's the F again. Uh, there's an O. This character has a opening of the mouth a little bit for the O. So if I'm doing hello, hello, something like that. So let's say we wanted to use this mouth chart in our project. We need to import it, just like we did import uh, on another day. Let's get into Animate and we'll do File Menu, Import to Stage. Remember, anything that we import automatically goes to the library. You can say Import to Library, but then you have to drag it back to the stage import to stage goes directly to the stage and it'll still save in the library. File import to stage. Select your lip sync file. I've imported the file. I'm going to move it off a little bit to the left. I'm going to lock that layer and also turn it into a guide. I'll call it mouth chart. I've got a sound for you. Uh, with a, uh, it's a it's a song with super super basic lyrics, super easy lyrics. It's basically like four words. But that's good to start off as a beginner. If you want to do something more complex, it will be more complex. But I've got a sound for you. And uh, this is the classic Blitzkrieg Bop from 1976 from the Ramones. So we're going to draw a very simple character. If you do a stick figure, I'm going to draw a sort of like Ramones looking character. And then I'm going to make the mouth move. So on a new layer, I can write character, head. I'm going to draw a very simple head of a character. You can do a simple circle character, that's fine. On a separate layer, I'm going to make character mouth. So a layer for the head and a layer for the mouth. Character mouth. I can keep this in one, one layer, of course, but I like to kind of separate things out once in a while to, to make it easier on me. Draw a simple head on character head, and then we'll do the mouth in a moment. Make sure you're on the head layer, and I'm going to draw a character. So with any color, any brush, any pencil, whatever you want. I'm going to do the brush tool, size 10. So I'm going to draw a head. Draw a bowl cut. Shades. Nose. And again, you don't have to be super fancy. That'll be fine. The mouth will be on a separate layer. Now, I kind of have a character straight on, kind of, slightly turned over, kind of, doesn't matter. Just draw some kind of head. get fancy or anything, but I'm just going to draw something like that. It can just be a simple circle with a couple of eyes and a nose, mouth not yet. Now, what's deceptive about doing a lip sync is that you're going to find plenty of mouth charts out there that say use this shape for this sound. But 
when a cartoon speaks or a person speaks, it's much more than the mouth. It's also the cheeks, it's the eyes, maybe it's the side of the mouth. There's a lot of things. So something like this, if I'm doing this kind of big old mouth, but I keep everything else exactly the same, that'll look a little odd. I should also <coughs> move the glasses around, maybe make the hair bob a little bit. I'm not gonna get that complex yet, but that's all part of the, the 12 theories, the 12 principles of animation, which is secondary animation and overlapping animation, secondary animation. Besides the main animation, what else is animating? We're gonna keep it simple with just the mouth, but we need to think about later on if I'm going to make a really big mouth, I also need to make cheeks and move the eyes and the ears and whatever. We'll do that later. I'm going to save that. Next, I'm going to import the sound that we're going to work with. In the network folder, in the web design folder, like I said, there's a sound in there that I've got for you. 01 Blitzkrieg Bop. What's that? Super simple. So you're saying A O or Hey Ho, let's go. Hey Ho, Hey Ho. Those two are going to be pretty easy. Let's go. So obviously I'm making very exaggerated mouth movements. Hey Ho, let's go. So we're going to import this sound based on the mouth movements we've got in the graphic then we're gonna add that to our drawing to import sound it's similar to importing the graphic so file import we're gonna do to library if I do import to stage it's gonna the sound file is gonna go into the layer of the current layer I don't want that I want a music layer so we'll import to the library so that it doesn't go directly into the current layer. Import to library. Blitzkrieg Bop. Make a new layer. Call it music. music. Now when I dragged it to to the bottom, it may it may go like this. Be careful here. I want remember I want my music always at the bottom of the layer order. But I moved it in a way that suddenly I get this like a little bouncing ball thing. That's uh we don't want that. Be careful here. So drag it a little to the left if it got indented like that. You want to drag it to the bottom left. We want to make sure that the mouth chart is a guide, we've got the T-square, and then music is a plain old layer. If it looks indented, you've got a little bouncing ball, if it's wrong, just click and drag it further to the left to get it out of that mode. On that music layer, I've got a sound in the library, I've got a layer for music, so in the properties, remember here is where we then add the sound to the actual animation. Sound name, we should have one file, 01 Blitzkrieg Bop. And we're going to change the sync to stream. So let's pause there. Did everyone get their sound in and is it on sync? Uh, sorry, sync stream. So stream is going to take the sound file and match it up with the frames in your animation. Anything besides that, what will happen is that the sound will play independent of what's on the screen. And that's very complex and we don't want that for us. We want the sound. I want to see the sound and I want it synchronized with a frame in my animation. Obviously, when I give you the assignment, I'll mention some of these things, but just remember that you want your music usually to stream. 
if I uh, if I do a control enter to to play it I, I don't hear anything I don't see the mouth chart I don't hear anything because I don't have enough time to play the music right now the music is playing for one frame We'll go to frame, maybe, let's say 65. On frame 65, press F5. That's adding a frame. So now I'm seeing the sound file. And it's going to play this far. If you have headphones, this will work the best because you can then hear what you want to synchronize. If you don't have headphones, we have headphones that we can check out. If you need headphones, you can come on up. I'll give you headphones. But if you've got headphones, you should plug them in. Uh, and we're going to see. We need to match up that sound. I can kind of see it already. That's probably where he's saying, hey, ho. So over here is where I'm going to need to move them, change the mouth chart. And we're going to hear things several times over and over. It's going to get annoying quickly, but we need to do this. So if I've got the, the sound uh, visible or hearable for 65 frames, we don't have anything else visible for 65 frames. We don't have the, the mouth chart to help us. We don't have the head. We don't have the mouth layer. So for all three of those other layers, you also want to F5. Remember the trick. Click and drag to select all three layers. And then F5 so we can see everything up to the 65th frame. I'm going to lock the character head and I'm going to select character mouth. Music layer, mouth chart layer, character head layer, character mouth layer. They're all locked. I'm going to lock the music layer too. I'm going to lock all the layers except the character mouth. There's going to be a part before he starts to sing. So I'm going to draw a very simple mouth on frame one of the mouth layer. Then, when we get to the part where there's actual sound, I'm going to draw a mouth related to that sound on that frame of that layer. I'm going to back up to frame one of character mouth. Just draw a totally simple mouth. You can press enter to, if you've got headphones also, you can press enter simply to play it quickly. When you do the control enter, it renders it and you can see it completely. But for our testing purposes, get used to pressing enter, which is the same as pressing play down here. Basic mouth until we get to approximately somewhere here. And this takes practice. Where should I draw the next mouth? I could start, in my case, for example, frame 36. I see that the sound starts there. Well, maybe it'll be safer on 35 when it starts. So depending, as you hear it and see it, you will figure out, should I start drawing the new mouth exactly where the sound is, slightly before, slightly after? Well, some of the most complex animations, they account for all of that, because we're going to draw it simply in that it's a new mouth when we hear a new sound. But on a real complex animation, they draw the movement of preparing to say the sound. So if I'm going to say, hey ho, I'm going to start to maybe draw a little bit, hey. So opening the mouth a little bit, hey. So even if I start to draw a little bit of a mouth open and then hey, that'll be better. But for, for simplicity, I'm going to say on frame 35, yeah, frame 35, I need a new frame. I'm going to draw a new mouth. Frame 35, press F7. So F5, 
five extends the current frame. We've seen that. F six copies the previous frame. We've seen that. And F seven creates a new frame. We've seen that. F five, six, and seven. It's the same thing as right click, insert frame, F five. Right click, insert keyframe, F six. Insert blank keyframe, F7. We've got a brand new empty keyframe, blank keyframe, where I'm going to draw the hay. Hay. So I think I'd be fine with an E or an A, maybe even hay. There's no wrong answer here. So I'm going to draw a mouth something like that. Based on what I see in the example, I've got some teeth. There's a tongue. I'm going with E first, yeah. That's going to be visible for several frames. You could go simply, well, let's do it this way. Uh, OK, the next sound is ho. Hey, ho. So at approximately frame 51, I need an O sound. So I've got the O. That's pretty easy. I need a blank keyframe where the sound changes. So I'm on 51, F7, to give yourself a new blank keyframe. And again, before we go too much further, make sure you're on the character mouth layer. All the other layers are locked, independent. So frame 51, F7, and then I'm going to draw an O mouth. Oh, sorry, 51. You can fill it in with color and all of that if you want, but I'll, I'll get back to that. So, hey, ho. Again, you're going to get tired of this really fast, but <laughs> learning is necessary. Let's say, because this sound is very simple and repetitive, I'm going to extend it to another hey-ho, but then I'm going to improve it a little bit. Right now, I'm simply changing between one sound and another sound. As I said, it might be better to add to it. Two, only two frames here looks kind of choppy. I'm going to try to add a few more other things to make it a little more realistic. So I need to extend my sound. Um, let's see how far we need to go. OK, well, then he's going to say, let's go. Uh, let's uh, extend this to, let's extend this to 95. All of your frames, extend them to 95. F5, that is. When I say extend the frames, it's add more frames. So we've got a frame 95 for all the layers. And then press F5. Okay. 
So we need to do the let's go. But before that, I'm going to return to the plain mouse. Hey, ho, pause, let's go. So I want a plain mouse for a moment. I can redraw it, or because I've got the plain mouse already on frame one, I can copy frame one. I'm going to do that. I've got the plain closed mouse. So back on frame one, right click, copy frame. Right click, copy frame. And then I need a plain mouse. Now, if you've got it on stream and you've got headphones on, when you scrub this playhead, when you move the playhead around, you'll be able to also hear it to help you synchronize. So, looks like on frame 61. I'm going to copy frame 1 and paste it into frame 61. Right click, paste frame. So see that? There's a moment where the mouth is at rest before the next set of symbols. On frame 75 or so, he starts to say, let's go. So I can see an L. Let's go. I can see it right here. L E T S. Let's. Let's. It looks like this. Let's go. I need to put those three sound files pretty close to each other here. I mean, those three graphics pretty close to here. It was super easy for hey, ho. It's a very simple word. It's a very simple sound. Hey, ho. Let's has a more complex um, vocal structure. So I'm going to do the L, the E, and the T pretty close together because this is just let's right here. Let's see. Online. Let me see. Uh, we're, we're about to. You mean? No, in 61, I copied. Copy your first frame and paste it into frame 61 because that's the basic mouth. On frame 75, here we need F7 to start to draw some new mouths. Frame 75, F7, and I'll draw the, the L shape. The big idea with this one is, notice there's no lower teeth. There's upper teeth, and there's also a tongue. ever sort of just make weird noises to make weird noises la, la, la. how is your mouth behaving when you're saying those sounds obviously now as I speak my mouth moves quickly but if I were to slow down my speech I can kind of hear and feel how my mouth is so I'm doing the let's let's E is coming up right after the L Frame 76, F7 for a new frame, and then I'll draw the E. Let's try to let the E is next. Then I'll make another frame for the T. So on uh, frame 76, F7. Maybe it'll help for me to turn on now onion skinning. Where was my previous mouth? I don't want to draw the next mouth shape super crazy out of the way. It may be a style that I'm trying to do, but most likely you're not. So I'm going to turn on onion skinning. Remember this onion skinning icon right here? So I would turn on onion skinning. You can see at least one frame be before you. Frame 
frame 76, I still want to see frame 75. So I turn on onion skinning. I'll see where that is so then I can draw the at about the right place. The E. The E. for a new blank frame. My onion skinning is still on to show me my previous um, frame. I'm going to draw the T part. So here's where I need to decide exactly where to put that mouth. I may think about drawing the top of the mouth where the top of the mouth currently is. But I should probably actually draw it a little bit lower because this is the size of the mouth at the point where the mouth is big. Let, let, and then my mouth goes back. So to start to draw the next mouth, I'll draw it a little bit lower in the, in a little bit more in the center of the area. B. It's very rare that it's going to be one visual graphic is going to rep represent a sound. Even something as simple as let's. Let me see what it looks like after I test it. The the movement there of the of that let's might go too fast. So the way we can extend the time, what's that? Yes. Uh, so the way we can extend something to be visible. This is happening maybe too fast. The this. This visual is happening maybe way too fast. So I want to extend the time that a frame is visible. Easy. I can click on that frame, the first little let's part, and press F5 one time. That will then show you've got the black circle and the white square. Now the L is extended visible for two frames. Instead of it visible for one twenty-fourth of a frame of a of a second, now it's two twenty-fourths. I'll do the same thing for the next keyframe right there. The E, the E. I want to extend that also one more, one more frame. So F five. the end over here, it's starting to then expand a little bit further out. We can either remove those frames that popped out or add two frames here. So I'm going to say, I'm going to remove those two frames. If you make a little selection out of those extra frames that pop out, you can then right click, remove frames. So if you've got frames that popped out like me, just select them and right click to remove frames. See how that looks. That's working a little bit better. Let me turn the volume down there. That's working a little bit better. The mouths aren't moving so fast when it's making that more complex 
um, movement. At, at, at only one frame per movement, it's too fast. But maybe I want to do that. This is the thing about animation. There's really no wrong thing to do except in your mind, what am I trying to do? And it doesn't look like that. So if the mouth moves really fast, that could be something you're trying to do. The character's speaking really fast, or the character's mumbling, or the character's saying something in secret. So that movement moves really fast. Mm -hmm. So at this point, let's see what it looks like. All right, so we've got let's, and then go is coming. Go, I don't see a G, so what do I do? Just do the O. Just do the O, exactly. If you don't see an actual letter, just do the corresponding, I think they call phenomes, I think that's the superficial term. Don't quote me on that, but I think it's phenomes when it's like your mouth movement related to the sound movement, something like that. So I need go, I need O, and that's going to start at about 85. I could choose to draw the simple closed mouth for a frame or two, and then draw the next O part. I'm going to try that. I still have copied the basic mouth from frame one. If you don't know this by now, when you copy anything on a computer, Mac, or Windows, it stays copied until you copy something else. So don't waste your time going back to copy frame one again if frame one has already been copied. If you've copied something else since then, however, you will have to go back to recopy frame one. I had copied frame one. It's still in memory. I'm going to add it on frame 81. It gives me a closed mouth. On frame 84, I need a blank keyframe to then start to draw the O for go. If I turn on the onion skinning again, I'll be able to see where the mouth was before and decide where to add the next mouth. If this is the basic mouth, the basic level of the mouth, when I make it higher or lower, I get different results. Hey, ho. I'm going to do the O. And I've already made an O shape. I could reuse the same O shape from a different frame. That's perfectly fine as well. That's another way to do it. If you've already got a shape, if you've already got all the shapes and save them into your library, you can just reuse the shapes. I've got there an O. On uh, frame 88, I will paste again the basic mouth. play the whole thing. I think it's coming along pretty well. Uh, the more of the mouth movements that I add, the more it'll look like it's speaking like that. Go. I think that part looks way better. The let's go looks way better than the simple hey ho because I didn't plan on those mouth movements before. And I, I like how the mouth is kind of coming along, but again, this comes back to what I said about a character speaking is not just the mouth. I should think about also moving the glasses up and down a little bit, maybe the hair, maybe other shapes like for cheeks. So if he's gonna do like, hey, ho, and it's gonna be even like a bigger, hey. So right now for me in the real world, if I say, hey, my cheeks pop out over here. So if I draw some cheeks, 
popping out on some of those sounds, I'd be better. And right now, again, it's just simply like static. I've chosen to separate the head and the other layers, but for real complexity, real realism, I have to incorporate the other elements. After that part of the song comes another hey-ho part. I could copy the part that already worked, but I need the practice. So I'm going to draw hey-ho again for more practice. Let me extend the sound. Let's see. Let's go to extend it to 140. Extend all of your frames to 140. So I need to do a hey-ho part again. Again, I'm going to do it manually. I won't copy those previous frames. I'm going to do hey-ho again. But to kind of make it more interesting, besides the simple, you know, hey, one time, I could draw this hey, and then right afterward, another e bigger or with an extra like cheek movement let's see so first of all he's got the basic mouth and then the hay starts again so at about line uh, at about frame 100 f7 turn on my onion skinning before he even starts the hay part I want to change the mouth a little bit this again goes back to the principles of animation this is anticipation what's going to happen before something happens. The main part is I want the hey, but I want a little mouth movement before hey. So I'm going to kind of draw that mouth again slightly differently. I know eventually it's going to get big, so I'm just going to kind of draw it again, but kind of like that. Two frames later, F7, so frame 102. Usually you're gonna you usually you're gonna give every one of your animation every one of your frames you're usually gonna give them two frames. This is called animating in twos. So one drawing shown twice. It's a very common thing to do. So at a hundred I've started to change the mouth. And then at 102 is where I'm going to draw the, let's see, uh, on 100 I've still got the, uh, 102 F7, and then I'm going to draw the E. I'm drawing the mouth up here. drawing E in a couple of ways, kind of open and then more open. And this is more open? This one is the kind of open. On the next frame, I'm about to do the more open. So two frames later, which is frame 104, F7, and then I'll draw the E mouth even more open. What I didn't do on the first path of hey ho was I didn't close the mouth before going to go hey ho or hey ho. I didn't close the mouth on hey. So two frames later, uh, I'm gonna do the basic 
mouth again to close it. So on frame 106, I still have it copied, so I'm just going to right click paste. If you need to make a loop out of only one part that you're working on, you have this looping option. You see we have this loop right here. If you activate loop, then you can put these bounding edges. When you press enter, only what's in the bounding box will loop. Turning on loop, putting it to a couple of frames there. You see the difference here, instead of just doing the E, I did a little frame of anticipation. So normal mouth, normal mouth, but slightly changed because he's about to say something. That's the anticipation. You're waiting for something. Then a change, and then a more change. So all of that's still doing hey, but now with three different frames, three different keyframes. is a change in a key change in the animation. And a frame is the same frame visible more than once. So I'm going to do ho, hey ho. I know that I'm going to do the O. I'm going to start with the basic mouth. I'm going to change the basic mouth slightly for anticipation. And F7 on line 116. Now at the moment I can say exact frame numbers, of course. But when you're working this on your own, You'll, you'll figure it out by looking at it, playing it over and over, getting tired of the sound, but then getting better at it and, and figuring out where to write it. This, this is going to be uh, part, of the, part of the assignment that's coming up, so it'll be good to practice it. So online, our frame, 116, F7, and then I will activate my onion skinning. Again, a little anticipation. I'm going to change the mouth. Still closed, but change it a little bit because he's about to say the O part of it. So I'll draw the mouth. I think I drew it a little bit higher last time because I know eventually the mouth was going to open up. But now it's going to go to the O. So I'll draw the mouth a little bit lower and a little bit smaller because eventually the mouth is going to get pretty small as an O. I'm going to draw the mouth again, slightly smaller, slightly lower. Too much, maybe? Two frames later, F7. I'm starting to draw the closed version. The way I'll do this, instead of simply drawing the O, yeah, I'm going to think about two ways to draw the same mouth. The O mouth, then the O mouth with the lip. Because that's what the O mouth over here is the example. So two frames later, F7. Draw the mouth, draw the lip. The reason for the lip is to show more of the... Um, 
more of the shape because again more than one thing is happening on a face This is going to go back to a resting basic face. Maybe I'll also add another um, another O, another O before it goes back to resting. So two frames later, F7. Less of a lip. More lip because more movement. Three O's. The kind of opening, very opening, very open, and then less open so that it can go back to finally closed. So I'm going to paste again. I've still got the basic mouth copied. Based on where my original mouth is on onion skinning, it shows that the that the final O mouth is really low compared to the starting point. Uh, that's not wrong or anything. That's just that what will happen is it's moving from a mouth on a certain point in the head back to another point in the head in a very quick time. So that might be something I'm trying to do. This again, animation is complex because we have so much to take into account. And something like this, if I had that O mouth originally closer to the area where it closes, then it's more realistic because the mouth travels less. When I'm talking, my mouth is moving all over the place, but it's in the same general area. If I'm a cartoon character, my mouth can go all over my, you know, my lower part of you know, my chin area. It can go wherever, and so it can uh, be more cartoony. Let's see how that looks. I'm gonna loop. I'm gonna loop this whole new part. Oops. So there you go. You're seeing that the more you add, more frames, more realistic. That's the basic idea. So Daniel and Levi, if you need a little bit of help, remember to raise your hand and uh, a little quieter and such. You guys need to know. Yes.
So the more frames I draw, the more realistic it can be. Therefore, if I want unrealism, I don't want a lot of frames. If I want realism, I want a lot of frames. If I want non-realism, I want less frames. The first version of Hey Ho was pretty unrealistic, only two shapes. The second version of Hey Ho, more realistic because I'm drawing more shapes. I'm going to play the whole thing again just to compare it. So let's see how that looks. So you should, you should see it even without the sound. Two mouth shapes in the beginning was okay, but now as we're getting more practice, more mouth shapes on the let's go looks more realistic. So even without playing the sound, you can see the second set of movements better, more realistic. So this uh, this many of the many of the basic things in an animation are actually very difficult. That walk cycle that we did as the first thing. The walk cycle is always very difficult. Lip synchronization, this can be pretty difficult too. But based on mouth charts, you know, examples, that can really, really help you. And I've got a very cartoony character, so those mouths work. If I had a really realistic character, I'd have to have much more realistic mouth movements. But I think here, with, uh, with this practice, let me say also, again, to remind you, more frames, more realistic. There's the anticipation part of the 12 principles. Plain mouth, slightly changed mouth, nothing has really happened yet, then the mouth changes, but it doesn't change to the complete change. It's like a, a movement in between. There's the complete change. There's the actual O with the lip. The mouth is going to go back to normal. Eventually the mouth is going to go back to normal, but before it went back to normal, I put in one more, one more drawing, a, a, an O that's getting more closed. Plain mouth, change mouth, opening mouth, fully open mouth, closing mouth, closed mouth. All of those frames to do a more realistic go.
Okay, so I think for this, this practice here, um, you can obviously keep going. I had a super simple 10 seconds of a sound file. Uh, it goes on to say, hey ho, let's go like four more times. You could practice that if you want, but what I've done here so far I think is good to, to kind of practice synchronization. As I said, this uh, is gonna be part of the assignment that's coming up, but it's actually gonna be the extra credit part. I'm going to give some parts of this assignment. Uh, there's going to be various requirements. You're eventually, again, I'll give you a handout, but the general idea is you're going to make an animated movie based on some of the concepts we've already looked at. We still have to look at a couple more, but one of the ones is lip syncing. But I'm going to make that optional. I'm going to make that extra credit. If you make your character lip sync based on what we've learned here, that can be a little extra credit because that can be really time consuming, getting those sounds to line up exactly with the visuals we're seeing here it's taking us a while we've already kind of been at this for like an hour and a half almost just for like four syllables so if you're gonna have the character say some sort of big speech before he dies well you're gonna have a lot of voice and mouth to synchronize and that's fine but it's extra credit so maybe to wrap up the animation here remember that uh, the mouth chart is uh, is a guide and when I do the control enter there's a big old empty space on the left it might be fun to in addition to seeing the mouth moving to make the words hey ho let's go appear on screen too so I'm gonna take advantage of that it's empty on the left side and I'm gonna make the words hey ho let's go appear as his mouth also says it So the way we'll do that is we've got the mouth chart as a guide and locked. Let's now hide it so that we see that it's hidden. I'm going to lock the character mouth layer and make a new layer called text. So I've got a music layer, <coughs> character head, character mouth, and make a new layer at the top called text. It's so common to be working on an animation and then adding more layers, and then this new layer has nothing in it. So I've already got parts of frames synchronized to sound where I then want to start to write words. So if I want these words to appear, I can even animate words. So let's go back somewhere. Frame 35 is when Frame 35 is when the first hey is starting. We need an F7 for a blank keyframe on the text layer. With the brush tool, because it's going to be a little bit more fun to draw the text instead of just write the text. I'm going to write hey. Two frames later, F7, I'm going to write hey again, kind of tracing my words, an exclamation point. Two frames later, F7. You see, I'm animating the, the words. I'm not tracing, I'm not worried about tracing my letters exactly every time. I'm doing this on purpose. I'm redrawing the letters themselves. Um, three times so that now the words are sort of animated. They have changes and, and movement as well. On frame uh, 51 F7 for blank, but here's how that's going to look. really annoying really fast but the idea is that uh, okay originally I didn't animate the hey part that well 
but I'm animating the word hey just by redrawing it. And so the word hey itself will be part of the animation. Hey, ho. I'm going to do the same thing with ho. Three different uh, drawings for the word ho. So starting where the O graphic, the brush tool, ho, two frames later, F7 with onion skinning to kind of see where my word is at. I'm going to draw the word leaning more to the right. Even that, moving it a little bit differently as I draw. So two frames later, F7. the word hey to be visible but then go away because then ho is coming up. So I want the word ho to go away before the next set of words come up. F7. That's a blank keyframe. do something very similar also for the let's part of it. I need another blank keyframe, F7. So you see, sometimes you're going to have this. You're going to have an instance where you've got a white dot, and that's perfectly fine. That means there's no drawing there. That's what I want. Hey, ho, disappears. I don't want it to stay visible like the mouth. I want the words hey, ho, to go away. So then a blank keyframe with nothing, and then another blank keyframe to start to draw the let's. So that's, again, the part of the anticipation. Something's coming. I was seeing something, something's coming, something's about to change, so blank, so now comes let's go, the same idea, I'll draw let's, a couple different ways. So what I was doing on this one was, I've got let's, then on the next drawing of it, I've got it a little larger, then on the next drawing it a little larger, then the next drawing smaller, so bigger than smaller. So the word is growing and then shrinks, it's expanding and contracting, animation. Gotta do go. This time I'm drawing the word big and making it smaller.
So now I'm synchronizing text with audio. <coughs> For the second group of hey ho, then I'll do the same thing. Just the different different drawings of the text. Now with this text, to vary things up if I want, I've been drawing a version of the text every two frames, just like I did the graphics. But if I want the text to move even faster, this is when I can have one keyframe as, as a frame. I, did, I do this in twos. One frame visible twice. One, two, three, four, visible twice. I can draw it in ones, meaning that the words, the next words, are going to be one new drawing every frame. So I'll try that just to see the difference. I'm starting with hey, again F7, but this time one frame later to redraw. And this one I'm going to try to draw it as similar to the original. One frame later, F7. difference will be that it will look like it vibrates or it shakes even faster for the movement, for the sound. The audio, I'm trying to synchronize it with the visuals, and in this case, it's a very energetic song. more work, but I'm drawing hay several times. Each one is slightly different, and that's fine. When it all plays together, like a flip book, we'll get the effect. So here, I've drawn the word hey several different ways, lots of frames. Notice the movement on that looks much more hyper, much more faster compared to the words because more frames, more realistic. You will do really well in this class if you get the idea that every frame is visible twice, drawing in twos. You'll do, you'll do very well there. More individual frames is many more drawings much more complexity. That's the difference between, you know, a cheap cartoon and an expensive cartoon. The, the expensive cartoons have people drawing, making the drawings every frame of movement. The cheaper ones have it in twos. The even cheaper, horrible ones have it in threes and fours. Uh, any of you know about that uh, old cartoon from the 90s, Hammer Man? You know, MC Hammer? MC Hammer had a cartoon in the 90s. It was a horrible cartoon that was drawn so bad. It's like, uh, they're just one image just standing there in the same movement while uh, it just sort of moves a bit, like it's, a gif. Yeah, it was like so choppy animation because they drew it in threes or fours. One drawing was visible for many frames. Comparing with something much, much better uh, with many more frames. So here I'm doing that on purpose in that the word hey is visible for many frames. I'm going to do that again for the ho part of it, but I'm already regretting it because it's a lot of drawings. So I'm going to write the ho part uh, with lots of frames. Well, first I need to make ho, uh, I need to make hey disappear. So I'm going to say um, somewhere around there, F7, so that it's gone, and then start again with another blank, and I'll start with go. Hey ho, what is he? He says hey ho. And again, 
one more frame over with onion skinning so I can understand what I need to draw. When you're drawing, so, when you're making so many drawings like that, this is when you can do the subliminal thing because I'm going to make a little face right there. So for one frame, the O is going to have a little face, but not for the other ones. Subliminal. So this is another kind of animation, some text animation. This is another idea. I'm just redrawing the same text. Then eventually it's not visible anymore, so two frames later, F7. And then I'll check what mine looks like so far. So there, there that's going. You've got the first part of the text, which, you know, it's a little squiggly, and then it appears. And then that last part about let's go is very squiggly, and that's on purpose. I've drawn, I've made a lot of drawings for that hay and the hoe at the end, and it changes a lot. I'm going to save that. This is going to be the, the practice um, that uh, we'll do together for the moment. Uh, if I want it even more realistic, again, I need to draw the glasses moving. I need to draw the hair moving. I'm not going to go that far. I'm just going to do the mouth. So I'm going to finish at that point, but then I've got one more thing. Any general questions on this lip syncing that we talked about today? Okay. Let me pause the recorder. We won't do a, a break because we're going to have lab time in a moment, but let me pause the recorder and then we'll do the next thing.